Get to know local leaders, catch community updates, and hear about the latest happenings from City Hall and Beyond on City Notes, an informative and hyper-local interview series brought to you by the City of Nicholasville. Today, we're here with Brian Clark, the City of Nicholasville's City Engineer. Brian, thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you, Brendan, for having me. Can you tell us a little bit about your background and what about it led you to public service? Uh, yeah, I'm from West Virginia. I attended UK, um, graduated there in 98, and then moved back home to work for a few years. And then I uh, ended up moving back here in 2014 because I reconnected with an old girlfriend from college and we ended up getting married and I moved back here. And uh, as far as my professional background, um, I'm a civil engineer. Um, and really, my bulk of my work has been dealing with erosion and sediment control and storm drainage. I've spent most of my career in the energy sector. That's basically just working with power plants and construction involving them. Any other items that go along with the day-to-day -day operations of a, of a coal-fired power plant. As far as public service, I think more mostly I was looking for a change. I greatly enjoyed the energy sector but uh, those jobs are few and far between and there weren't too many right around Lexington and I was wanting to stay here and this city engineer position came up a friend of mine told me I should apply for it came and interviewed and it just sounded really interesting something that I hadn't quite uh, done before and really it just seemed like I could make a difference and and that's kind of what drew me to the to the public service sector Beautiful. And so now that you've been in the position over a year now, what kind of projects do you work on? What's a day in the life like for the city engineer? Well, yes, that's right. I started in December 2021. So it's been, uh, what, I guess a year and about three months now, two months. Kind of a day in the life, I'd say to sum it up, is ever changing. Uh, I usually have uh, uh, a running to-do list of items that come up and I try to shape my schedule for the day, but I'll say at least half the time it does not work out that way. Um, I get lots of phone calls from local developers, uh, engineers, and uh, contractors with all the, the current jobs that are going around in the city and uh, that always keeps kind of keeps things lively and uh, I guess as far as projects, uh, any development that is happening within the city limits, I usually I see the construction plans on that and review them to make sure they're up to our city standards and specifications. And then I have three other gentlemen that uh, work in my department that uh, basically help me carry that out. We'll go out and see site visits, uh, answer questions from uh, the three entities that I mentioned before, the contractors, developments, or developers, and uh, and even citizens. Um, lots of calls that I get are from citizens that just uh, think, feel that they have a stormwater issue or uh, maybe a building issue or they're looking to do something and they just need some direction and possibly some help or get pointed in the right way so that whatever they're doing comes under the city standards, they can help them get on their way. And I know one topic that also comes up a lot for you, especially with spring around the corner, is stormwater. So I know when stormwater is polluted, it's particularly unfortunate because unlike the water that goes down our sinks, stormwater isn't treated. It just goes directly into our lakes and rivers. Can you tell us about stormwater and what we can all do to help? Absolutely. And yes, that is one of the things I get called on most is uh, stormwater issues. I just went to the Kentucky Stormwater Association Conference. That's an annual conference that's held that uh, a lot of municipalities in the state go to, and it just helps update us on what all is coming out, any new regulations that are being instituted that we have to follow, because we need to make sure that anybody doing any development or any work within the city follows those, and those have to deal with new construction and uh, current operations. Kind of the mantra that, that a lot that I've heard a lot is if it's on the ground, it's in your stormwater. And I don't think a lot of people think about that. And, uh, you know, as far as just anything that we do, if you've got, if you're using pesticides and, and kind of overdoing it, not really using the application rate, you know, any of that excess that uh, is not used is washed down and, and washed into your creek 
creeks and streams, any out of date chemicals, or, you know, for instance, if you're painting and you spill, not using drop cloths, and you spill a lot, uh, again, on the ground, all of that gets washed into it. We're trying to make preparations to help monitor some of that, but really a lot of the responsibility falls on just us individuals as owners to kind of do our due diligence. For instance, when you're washing your car uh, and you're all finished with the sudsy, dirty water, don't take that out and dump it out in the street because that goes right down the street catch basin. It's about depositing that down your toilet in the house or something like that because then that does enter the sanitary system and that can get treated. Now, of course, you don't want to dump greases or anything like that and cause problems with your lines. But, you know, a good rule of thumb also is if you can soak it up so that it's not dripping or you have greases or things like that, bag it up and throw it away. Try to get those things actually in the trash. That way they go to a permitted landfill where those are all lined. They're made for containing contaminants that may leach out instead of just depositing them right to the water system. So while you're washing your cars, changing motor oil, pet waste, pesticides, think about where all that stuff goes. That's absolutely, how we can help. absolutely. It, it all starts with basically us. So other than bringing awareness to stormwater, what else is on the horizon for your department? Well, um, one of the big things, it does kind of involve stormwater, but a little bit, uh, I don't know if many people understand it or are familiar with it. There is such a thing called an MS4 program. And as far as development goes in the community, uh, there have always been regulations for quantity of stormwater. For instance, if a grass field becomes developed for a business and it becomes a building in a parking lot with impervious areas, there's an increase in stormwater runoff off of that lot. Well, the developer, contractor, whoever, designer, working in one, working in all together, need to figure out how to mitigate that extra stormwater so you don't do any damage downstream. Well, the MS4 program actually works on quality of stormwater. So while you're also mitigating the amount, you're mitigating the quality. And that just simply means there are some regulations that show how much stormwater you need to treat for quality wise. And those can be putting in certain filters into tension basins or putting in individual filters in structures. There's a whole myriad of items that can be used. We have used those in the past, but we're really focusing on that now to get that out into the mainstream so it becomes a regular part of design and installation for new development. The other thing is that I would say that's on the horizon is just kind of a, a constant improvement and efficiency for the engineering department as a whole. Just working on ways that we can improve to help communicate what we need to get out to the public better, to get our standards and regulations out to designers and contractors and developers so that they aren't hit by any surprises when uh, they submit construction plans. Everything is up to par and as it should be, there's no back and forth and trying to figure out what needs to be done. And just as they say, time is money and the more efficient we can become, the better off I think everybody else is. So Brian, what Nicholasville person, place, or thing has been an influence in your life lately? Really just kind of the city itself. And that would be the public and the people with whom I work. Um, as we stated earlier, this is my first foray into public service. It's different than anything I have done on the private sector. Much more involvement dealing with all the citizens in the community, hearing stormwater issues and other items and trying to solve problems more on a personal level than uh, just figuring out how to design and construct something on a private site. I think it's helped improve my communication and the key to minimizing problems as far as I'm concerned is the better communication you have, the easier just about everything can flow. So being able to meet several different people involved in several different issues and trying to figure out how to talk so that everybody comes down and understands about what the problem is and how we might be able to fix it, I think is just 
really helped me overall. And then uh, another thing that's been a big influence is, I don't know if everybody knows, but there's such a thing called Leadership Jessamine County. And it is something that you can sign up for. Since I'm not from here, I didn't know a whole lot about Jessamine County and Nicholasville. Now, my wife grew up here, but uh, I do not. And by getting involved in that, I have learned so much about the surrounding county, Jessamine County, and amazing. I find myself just saying, wow, I had no idea that we had all that, or we had these resources, or this was in, in town or in the county to do. And, and I think that's been, been pretty amazing. It's just been a, a really good learning experience overall. That's fantastic. Well, Brian, thank you so much for joining us today and for all you do for the city. Brandon, thank you.